Okay, 2015, question B2, higher level DCG. Um, so first part, of course, as always, is to identify the topic. And we can see by reading the question and looking at the topic here that we have a combination of intersecting solids and we also have obviously axonometric projection. It's axonometric and you can distinguish that from diametric and trimetric by virtue of the fact that these two angles are the same meaning this one here has to be 120 as well. So the first part of the question would be to set up as given. Now a lot of the setup here, a lot of the sizes of the uh, square base pyramid are based on this width here, all right, of 110 millimeters. All right, that 110 millimeters is important there because that gives us the width of the diagonal of the square that makes the base of the pyramid. It also gives us the width of the trace plane for my axonometric view. So AB there is 120. The trace plane obviously is an equilateral triangle. ABC is an equilateral triangle. So BC and AC are also 120 degrees. Um, it's also causing the size for the developed uh, uh, vertical plane here, which where my elevation goes. So uh, that means that the base of the pyramid here is fitting in here. And notice that the height is coming from there across. All right. Now the first part uh, is to set up. There are the parts that are, that, are, that are difficult to set up. You can see here we'll be looking for this point penetration here, which is fairly straightforward because we have it in plan. We have it in, in elevation. So that's easy got. These two points of penetration here, a little bit of work required for them. And the bending point, which we have here. So we just need to transfer that into this view complete this view so that we can complete this view. Now, you need to set up the question first. Um, it should be fairly straightforward. I have the question set up here already. And what you need to do now is pause the video at this stage and get the question set up to that stage if you haven't done so already. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the point penetration for this line here. I'm going to do that by using the fact that I have it in the plan. I'm going to draw a generator from the apex through the point of penetration down to the base. I'm going to take the distance from this corner into the, where that generator starts on the base, mark it over here, join it back to the apex, and where it crosses this line will give me the point of penetration. I'll do the same for this one. And then I'm going to find the two bending points here and here, simply by taking, projecting them parallel to the base. So effectively what I'm doing is I'm taking a vertical section down through the solid there, and uh, taking the distance in from the side, marking it in from the side here, going back up vertically, or in other words, perpendicular to the base. Now, a big part of this uh, question is knowing and understanding that what I see when I look in here is drawn up here. What I see when I look down here is drawn down here. It is orthographic projection after all. Okay, so I'm just going to do that and, and complete my axonometric view. The axonometric view points on the axonometric view. These points here, obviously, are obtained by projecting back in at 30 degrees from the elevation and projecting up vertically from the plan. Now what I've done is I've labeled them in the plan not one, two and three, not one, two and three in the elevation. And then you're just projecting in not, projecting up not to get not in the axonometric. It's vital that you index the point so that you can find where you are. All right. So I'm going to change color here for this, because for this is solving the intersecting solids part of the question. And I'm just going to change the color um, so that it makes it a little bit more obvious to you on the clip. So I'm going to draw that generator that I was talking about from the apex to the base through point one. And I'm going to draw it in red. So there's the generator. I want that generator in the elevation. So I'm going to take its distance from uh, the bottom left corner of the base in. As remember, it is a pyramid, so the square represents the base. This point represents the apex. There's the, an edge view of the base, so I'm just marking that distance now in. I'm going to join that back to the top, our apex. Just draw it in red again. So there's the same generator. Now, obviously, because of the way this view ends up being orientated, 
the vertical lines end up being inclined at 15 degrees to horizontal. So I'm just going to extend now this line. down and that gives me the point of penetration. Now because the solid is symmetrical I can just project that point of penetration across to the other side, project that point down like so, and extend it down <coughs> and then I'm going to draw what would be this line here which is going to be a line parallel to the base and that's what that looks like there. Now, I need to join uh, this point to this point to this point. So I have to find this bending point. Now, that's the next important job to do. So what I said I was going to do was I'm going to use, again, I'll use a different color for this. I have that bending point in plan. So I'm very simply going to use the fact that I have it in plan. Remember, your plan is orientated to 45 degrees. Now, I obviously, I'm trying to draw this in a tree sheet, so I've sacrificed some of my plan there, but I won't need it. So I'm going to take that bending point there and I'm going to use a green line to project it out like so. And then I'm going to use my compass to transfer that distance again to my elevation. It's a point on the plan or point on the base rather. So I'll mark that point in on the base. That's where it ends up there. Again, I can use my 15 degree line to bring that up. And obviously the line is much longer here. Now, again, because the solid is symmetrical, the bending points will be the same on both sides. So I'm just going to project that bending point across to there. So now to finish, I have to get this portion of the line here which means I'm going to join from this point up to the bending point and then it'll go back along this surface. So to do that, I'm just going to join from there up to the bending point. And then that means that I can now heavy this portion here of my elevation. And it means that I can heavy this portion here of my elevation as well. So there is the elevation completed and you can see that that is what I'd see if I was looking in here like so. Looking down on top the plan was already completed. So that means that now I can complete my axonometric view. All I have to do is project in the limits of the line coming down from one by projecting in there and just heavying the line down from one as far as that point. I can do the same from two or I can use the fact that use the fact that this line is horizontal so it'll be a line at 30 degrees here. Okay, I can project in number three's point penetration which is got from here. Now the reason why that's got from there is because of the fact that I am seeing in this view I'm seeing an edge view of that surface. There's point number three brought in, and now simply to finish, just putting in the bending point, and it comes into there, which is on this edge. There's the bending point. I couldn't have projected it up because it would just go up along the edge. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to go from three to the bending point, and back down to two. I need to get that bending point on the back as well. So that's where it'll go there. So I've just overdrawn that line slightly. And now I can heavy this line here as far as that bending point. And I can heavy this line here as far as that bending point. It's a vertical line. And there I have the question finished. So that's 2015 question B2.